Dan was a young man who worked as an IT for a software company for the past five years. Things have been a little hard for Dan. He lost his father six months ago. Two weeks ago, his mother had just passed away. He was the only child, and for the first time in his life, he felt alone. This week, he found out the company he had worked for was downsizing, and he got laid off. He was still grieving. It was all too much for him. Early one morning, he decided that he should get out and do something special, something unusual. He thought, I should go get in touch with nature. What a better way to forget about your problems than going camping. He packed a few things and took a trip to the forest. He drove for a while, found a random area, parked his car, and started his adventure, deciding to spend the day alone, meditating, and reflecting on life, breathing fresh air away from people, away from the city. The day wore on. Dan thought that was enough nature for one day. But at that point, he realized he couldn't find his way back. Dan was lost in the woods. He started walking back. He tried to retrace his steps. He continued walking, hoping that was the right direction. He had no way of knowing his way back. He heard water. He found a small creek. That's when he knew for sure he was lost. He was never anywhere close to a stream before. The sun started to set. He had been walking for hours, and fear and panic began to set in. His first reaction was, I need to get back to my car. Then, he heard something that made him stop in his tracks. He heard the howling of wolves in the distance. He picked up the pace. The howling started to get closer. He started walking faster away from the howling. His heart was beating fast. It's getting dark. It's harder to see anything. He was walking so fast and it was so dark he couldn't see this big log in front of him. He tripped and fell hard on the ground. His leg was bleeding and he was in terrible pain. This can't be happening, he yells. The wolves were after him. He heard something again in the bushes, but now he can hear growling. He's wounded and the wolves can smell the blood. So this is it, he thought. I never thought I'd go out like this. Just as he was about to give up hope, he looked up and saw smoke. It was coming from a chimney. He had stumbled upon a small cabin in the woods. The porch light was on. Someone was there. He can barely walk. He tried his best to make it to the cabin, but he couldn't take another step. It was his leg. It was broken. He heard more wolves coming. They're close. Then, from a distance, he looks at the cabin and sees a man in the front porch. He screamed, help, help. It's so dark, he can't see anything. But he's grabbing rocks and throwing them in all directions, screaming at the wolves in a desperate attempt to save his life. He's on the ground, screaming, help, at the top of his lungs. It's dark and cold. He has nothing left in the tank. Exhausted, he lies on the ground looking at the sky, thinking, this is it, I'm going to be eaten by wolves. And right then, at that moment, the loudest sound he had ever heard almost made him jump out of his skin. It was a shotgun. In shock, he looks up and a flashlight blinds him. It was the man he had seen on the porch. He reached down to hold his hand and said, don't worry, son, you're safe now. Then he fired his shotgun in the air one more time. The wolves scattered in all directions. Thank God you're here. Thank you, Dan said. The man saw that Dan was injured. He grabbed him by the arm and he said, Here, let me help you up. I'm Jim. I'm Dan. Thank you for saving my life. He offered Dan a hot meal and showed him to a room where he could rest for the night. The following day, Jim drove Dan to a nearby hospital. Jim stayed for a little while and waited until he was admitted. Once in the room, Becky, his nurse, walked in. It was love at first sight. Dan and Jim have been friends ever since. And of course, at the end, he got the girl. 
Dan and Becky got married and had two children. As terrifying as all of this was, the experience of nearly dying in the woods made him feel alive again. And if it wasn't because of this turn of events, he never would have met the love of his life and make a lifelong friend. After that day, Dan was a changed man. If he could survive this, he could survive anything. The moral of the story is, it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. Things will get better because life is full of nice surprises. Dan was a young man who worked as an IT for a software company for the past five years. Dan era un joven que trabajaba como técnico, esos técnicos que arreglan las computadoras, como técnico para una empresa de software durante los últimos cinco años. Things have been a little hard for Dan. He lost his father six months ago. Two weeks ago, his mother had just passed away. Las cosas han sido un poco difíciles para Dan. Perdió a su padre hace seis meses y hace dos semanas su madre acababa de fallecer. He was the only child. For the first time in his life, he felt alone. This week, he found out that the company he had worked for was downsizing and got laid off. Él era el único hijo y por primera vez se sintió solo. Esta semana se enteró de que la empresa para la cual había trabajado estaban reduciendo gente y lo despidieron. Laid off or lay off. Aquí dice, estoy diciendo despedir, pero no lo despidieron porque estaba haciendo un mal trabajo. Estaban simplemente haciendo la compañía más pequeña y se tuvieron que deshacer de trabajadores. He was still grieving. It was all too much for him. Early one morning, he decided that he should get out and do something special, something unusual. Todavía estaba estaba triste, estaba de duelo porque su, su madre acababa de fallecer. Todo era demasiado, fue demasiado para él. Una mañana temprano, decidió que debería, que debía hacer algo especial, algo inusual. He thought, I should go get in touch with nature. What a better way to forget about your problems than going camping. Él pensó, debería ir a ponerme en contacto con la naturaleza. Qué mejor manera de olvidarte de tus problemas que salir a acampar. He packed a few things and took a trip to the forest. He drove for a while, found a random area, parked his car, and started his adventure, deciding to spend the day alone, meditating, reflecting on life, breathing fresh air, away from people, away from the city. Empacó algunas cosas y se fue de viaje al bosque. Manejó un rato, encontró un lugar al azar, estacionó su carro y comenzó su aventura, decidiendo pasar el día solamente meditando y reflexionando sobre la vida, respirando aire fresco, lejos de la gente y lejos de la ciudad. The day wore on. Dan thought that was enough nature for one day. But at that point, he realized he couldn't find his way back. Dan was lost in the woods. El día avanzaba y Dan eh, pensó, esa es suficiente naturaleza por un día. Pero en ese momento se dio cuenta que no podía encontrar el camino de regreso. Dan se perdió en el bosque, o estaba perdido en el bosque. He started walking back. He tried to retrace his steps. Nothing looked familiar. He continued walking, hoping that was the right direction. He had no way of knowing his way back. Empezó a caminar de regreso y trató de volver sobre sus pasos, pero nada parecía familiar. Siguió caminando esperando que esa era la dirección correcta, pero no tenía forma de saber el camino de regreso. He heard water. He found a small creek. That's when he knew for sure he was lost. He was never anywhere close to a stream before. Oyó agua. Encontró un pequeño arroyo. Fue entonces cuando supo con certeza que estaba perdido. Él nunca estuvo cerca de un arroyo antes. The sun started to set. He had been walking for hours. And fear and panic began to set in. His first reaction was, I need to get back to my car. El sol comenzó a ponerse. Había estado caminando durante horas y el miedo y el pánico comenzaron a aparecer. 
Su primera reacción fue, yo necesito regresar a mi, a mi carro. Then he heard something that made him stop in his tracks. Luego escuchó algo que lo hizo detenerse en seco. He heard the howling of wolves in the distance. Escuchó el aullido de los lobos a la, en la distancia. He picked up the pace. The howling started to get closer. He started walking faster away from the howling. Cogió el ritmo. He picked up the pace. Cuando digo, he picked up the pace, quiere decir que te apresures, que lo hagas más rápido. A lo mejor todos están yendo más rápido que tú. Pick up the pace. Entonces, él tuvo que empezar a caminar más rápido. El aullido comenzó a acercarse. Empezó a caminar más rápido, alejándose de los aullidos. His heart is beating fast. It's getting dark, and it's harder to see anything. Su corazón empezó a latir, o estaba latiendo rápido. Estaba oscureciendo, y es más, era más difícil de ver. He was walking so fast, and it was so dark, he couldn't see this big log in front of him. He tripped and fell hard on the ground. Estaba caminando tan rápido, y estaba tan oscuro, que no pudo ver este gran tronco enfrente de él. Él se tropezó y cayó con fuerza en el suelo. His leg was bleeding and he was in terrible pain. This can't be happening, he yells. Su pierna estaba sangrando y tenía un dolor terrible. Esto no puede estar pasando, él grita. The wolves were after him. He heard something again in the bushes, but now he can hear growling. Los lobos lo perseguían, estaban detrás de él. Volvió a escuchar algo entre los arbustos pero ahora pude escuchar gruñidos. He is wounded, and the wolves can smell the blood. So this is it, he thought. I never thought I'd go out like this. Está herido, y los lobos pueden oler la sangre. Así que, eso es el final, pensó. Nunca pensé que me iría así. O que me, nunca pensó que iba a morir así, siendo atacado por lobos. Just as he was about to give up hope, he looked up and saw smoke. It was coming from a chimney. He had stumbled upon a small cabin in the woods. Justo cuando estaba a punto de perder esperanzas, miró hacia arriba y vio humo. Venía de una chimenea. Se había topado con una pequeña cabaña en el bosque. The porch light was on. Someone was there. La luz del porche estaba encendida. Alguien estaba ahí. He can barely walk. He tried his best to make it to the cabin. But he couldn't take another step. It was his leg. It was broken. Con trabajo podía caminar. Hizo todo lo posible para llegar a la cabaña, pero no pudo dar un paso más. Era su pierna. Estaba rota. He heard more wolves coming. They were close. Then, from a distance, he looks at the cabin and sees a man on the front porch. He screamed, Help! Help! Oyó que se acercaba más lobos. Están cerca. Se acercan. Luego, desde la distancia, mira a él hacia la, hacia, hacia la cabaña y ve a un hombre en el porche delantero, en la parte de, de enfrente de la casa, y gritó, ¡Auxilio! ¡Auxilio! It's so dark, he can't see anything, but he's grabbing rocks and throwing them in all directions, screaming at the wolves in a desperate attempt to save his life. Está tan oscuro que él no puede ver nada, pero está agarrando rocas, arrojándolas en todas direcciones, gritándole a los lobos en un intento desesperado de salvar su vida. He's on the ground, screaming help from the top of his lungs. It's dark and cold. He has nothing left in the tank. Exhausted, he lies on the ground. Está en el suelo gritando ayuda a todo pulmón. Está oscuro y frío. No le queda nada en el tanque. Agotado, se acuesta en el suelo. Eso es una expresión que quiere decir cuando dices, there's nothing left in the tank. Como, como si fuera un tanque de gasolina que ya no tiene gasolina. No, there's nothing left. Está vacío. Cuando ya no, tienes, ya no tienes energía. I have nothing left. Looking at the sky, thinking, this is it. I'm going to be eaten by wolves. Mirando al cielo, Pensando, ese es mi fin. Voy a ser devorado por lobos. And right then, at that moment, the loudest sound he had ever heard almost made him jump out of his skin. It was a shotgun. Y justo entonces, en ese momento, 
El sonido más fuerte que había escuchado casi lo hizo saltar de su piel. Era una escopeta. In shock, he looks up and a flashlight blinds him. It was the man he had seen on the porch. En, en un estado de shock, mira hacia arriba y una linterna lo ciega. Era el hombre que había visto enfrente de ese porche, en esa casa. He reached down to hold his hand and said, Don't worry, son. You're safe now. Then he fired his shotgun in the air one more time. The wolves scattered in all directions. Se agachó para tomar la mano de, de Dan y dijo, No te preocupes, hijo. Ahora estás a salvo. Y luego disparó su escopeta en el aire una vez más. Los lobos se dispersaron en todas direcciones. Thank God you're here. Thank you, Dan said. Gracias a Dios que estás aquí. Gracias, le dijo Dan. The man saw that Dan was injured. He grabbed him by the arm. Here, let me help you up. I'm Jim. I'm Dan. Thank you for saving my life. El hombre vio que, que Dan estaba herido. Lo agarró del brazo y le dijo, ven, déjame ayudarte a levantarte. Yo soy Jim. Yo soy Dan. Gracias por salvarme la vida. He offered Dan a hot meal and then showed him to a room where he could rest for the night. Le ofreció a Dan una comida caliente y luego lo llevó a una habitación donde pudiera descansar por la noche. The following day, Jim drove Dan to a nearby hospital. Jim stayed a little while and waited until he was admitted. Al día siguiente, Jim llevó a Dan a un hospital cercano. Jim se quedó un rato y esperó hasta que lo admitieron. Once inside the room, Becky, his nurse, walked in. It was love at first sight. Una vez dentro del cuarto donde ya le dieron su cama, Becky, su enfermera, entró caminando. Fue amor a primera vista. Dan and Jim have been best friends ever since. And of course, at the end, he got the girl. Dan and Becky got married and had two children. Dan y Jim han sido mejores amigos desde entonces. Y por supuesto, al final, él consiguió a la chica. Dan y Becky se casaron y tuvieron dos hijos. As terrifying as all of this was, the experience of nearly dying in the woods made him feel alive again. And if it wasn't because of this turn of events, he never would have met the love of his life and make a lifelong friend. Tan aterrador como fue todo esto, la experiencia de casi morir en el bosque lo hizo sentir vivo nuevamente. Y si no fuera por este giro de acontecimientos, nunca hubiera conocido el amor de su vida y hecho un amigo de por vida. After that day, Dan was a changed man. If he could survive this, he could survive anything. The moral of the story is that it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. Things will get better because life is full of nice surprises. Después de ese día, Dan era un hombre diferente, un hombre cambiado. Si él pudo sobrevivir eso, él podría sobrevivir cualquier cosa. La moraleja de la historia es que no importa lo que estés pasando en ese momento, las cosas mejorarán porque la vida está llena de sorpresas agradables.